Hi, friends. This is going to be a tremendously fun monthly favorites. June was an extraordinary month for makeup for me because the purchases that I made, I have been using nonstop. We'll get to those and not only will we touch on the makeup, we got a little bit of fashion, okay? A uh, brush, a uh, nail polish that's not necessarily new, but I wanted to feature in this month's favorite because an older collection that I've just been gravitating towards. We got some skincare and let me start off with with this favorite this is more of a lifestyle thing but i thought it would be cool to present this in my june favorites given that it is six months out from the new year may i just pause for a moment it's already july fam where is the time going i felt like it was only in march that i saw i told myself was summer feels so f no is here and before you know it, before, oh my gosh. Anyway, I wanted to share my Hobonichi Techo One Piece Collaboration Planner because I committed, I said at the beginning of the year, I committed to writing a passage a day. And that's what I did. Last year was a little dicey. I had a Hobonichi then, but was not consistent with writing in it every day. And from January till now, we wrote every day so far. We wrote every day so far. And something that my Hobonichi provided was structure. Every time I have a call, appointment, I put in my little calendar. I put in my calendar and this keeps me in line. The reinforcement also helpful because not only do I have things written down. I got them electronically on the Google Calendar, on the iCal, on 10 calendars, okay? I'm the person that needs the reminder for the reminder. I have so many moving parts when it comes to my online coaching, to YouTube, to content creating for IG, all these things, my Hobonichi holds me down. And what I love about the structure of this planner is that you have the blank pages is an entire page for a dedicated day. You got the times here on the side. So you can treat this page as a, a planner, right? You know, this time for this, that time for that. Or it could be a passage for reflecting over the day. Maybe you're an artist and you wanna draw it out or maybe you do half and half. You draw and you write. The opportunity there I thought was just amazing for me to have space in whether I wanted to be super structured, like today I did this, this, or I'll have a to-do list, or maybe I just write out my thoughts, like this is what happened today, what I felt about it, what can I do better? And I'm so happy and proud of myself that I committed to writing in this every day. Now there was a little bit of a glitch. These pages are so thin that one day I like flipped to and then realized, didn't see the date and when I was, writing I think the following I was like wait a minute these dates don't match so I went back and wrote over I wrote over both pages the two days that I missed so that everything was filled and I'm happy to say I think I'm on I'm on a good trajectory right now this has become a habit for me in the beginning it was tough right because I didn't have that cue yet in my life to write in my planner and now I do. There are some days that I miss a night and then I'll just write that passage in the morning and later that day I'll write the passage for the day of. Needless to say, I'm happy with myself in dedicating that even short amount of time to go over my day. I think it's important for, for individuals to write about what they accomplished because I know we have high expectations for ourselves. We wanna be ultra productive and we forget about little things here and there that we accomplished that might not be on a higher tier of endeavors, but we still did it. And I think that adds perspective. It also just for myself helps organize my mind in just making sure everything is in place, that if I feel overwhelmed, I just write it down. Write out the strategy. What are you thinking about? Word dump, brainstorming, whatever it is for you, 
So I had to share that in my June faves because since this is the halfway mark for the year and I've written in each and every page thus far, I was excited to share. So happy to kick off the faves with my Hobonichi Techo planner. And Luffy, if you're wondering why Luffy's on the cover and you don't watch anime or read manga, sorry, slight tangent. Luffy brings that energy where, and you know, you know, he is going to win no matter what that's that's the the that's the mindset he has even when he loses right when he he's taken some major losses but when he shows up he knows he's going to make things happen and i sometimes feel i need that energy for myself right i need that luffy energy to just break in the space and say i'm going to do this and sometimes i'm not like that because i get into my head you know the imposture syndrome thing i'm not good enough what am i doing it you know, I just think of Luffy and say, he would never, ever have that type of mentality. So you shouldn't either, young lady. And I have him here as well. This is my Hobo Nichi Techo day free. So there are no dates. You could kind of use the pages as you like. And where I write a lot of my like YouTube notes, you know, bullet points that I would like to include in my videos, the faves that I would like to include in the upcoming monthly fave video. So we got Luffy all over the place here. Going into some fashion, my goodness. <sighs> have you ever walked past a window display? Okay. And you didn't even stop to see. You just went into the store. That's what happened to me. The minute I saw these pants, it was so seamless from seeing to going in and I knew I was gonna buy them. I had no idea how much they would cost. I was, I was hoping that it would not be crazy and they were reasonably priced for the type of store that it is. So they have three locations, I believe, two in New York, one in Miami. It is a designer concept store where very much edited and they don't have a lot of pieces per collection. Everything is, is pretty niche. And these particular pants are called balloon pants. And I think you are already familiar with my style sense by now, the Lululemon cargo pants, the rag and bone, uh, what are the, I forgot the name of the silhouette, the barrel pant, right? That's my jam, the high waist, barrel pant, balloon pant, whatever you wanna call them, type of a pant, okay? But what caught my eye was just the flower design and how they were stitched. So they're high-waisted, they come wider around the hips and they taper nicely at the ankle. And this pant length is perfect for my height. I'm 5'5". Five five. The contrast stitching you see in this mustard color, the black denim with the faded floral print is like tropical and gothic at the same time because the colors are muted, right? You got like that marigold, olive khaki, those tones that exist on top of the black denim, again with the mustard stitching thread, and you have that mustard color on the lining of the waistband. You have these deep pockets on the very front of the thigh, so they drop a little. The pockets are not on the hips, which I like too, but I like how the pockets are here right in the front. And you have like a shelf on the back, uh, on top of your hip. So the way these pants are designed and sewn, and the fabric chosen to create these pants. My goodness, everything, all the check boxes were marked for these, these pants and I just adored them. And while I was there, I tried on these shorts and I had to get these shorts too. You got a similar theme going on with the floral print except now it's on a more caramel tan background and the palm trees and, and print of whatever plant that is, is more of like a, a an olive so the colors consistent through but i like the billowiness of the shorts it feels like i'm wearing a skirt because the fabric comes out a little bit and the waistband is also a little high you got the pockets on the back and you got the hip pockets on the front i had to get these two because when it's now so humid out and if i do want to wear a short preferably i would like one to be loose fitting around the thigh so air could get in there but they're long enough too so they're not super short my goodness so i had to share these two items on my june phase because i've been wearing them non-stop again from the color to the fabric to how they're designed and sewn treasures 
now exist in my wardrobe. Getting into some skincare or body care specifically, I shared a lot of skincare updates in my previous May favorites and I wanted to share some body care favorites and I had mentioned I think in April's video that I've been loving the Necessaire Body Serum. I am aware that body... <laughs> body. Good Molecules has a body serum as well, like a hyaluronic acid base, kind of similar to what, what the Necessaire is giving, but cheaper. So let me know, fam, if you tried that product, what your experience has been with it, because I am considering trying that after I finish the Necessaire. And listen, the body serum is fantastic and I'll buy it again. I would love to buy it on sale, however, like I did in the Sephora sale, but I'm going to give the Good Molecules a try. Maybe that'll be a fantastic product as well. These two are from the Copper Faucet. I did share about this brand, I think last year, is a local brand here in Westchester that they sell in several farmers market. And I bought this from the Bronxville farmers market. And at the time, their body butter looked like this. So they rebranded, repackaged. They have a lot more scents. I did try the Blue Cactus, a little bit too perfumey for me, especially when I wear with the body oil, which I will share here in a minute. I wanted to, though, share the body cream. I think they also changed their formula because it's cloud-like, moussey, thick. Look at that, but it absorbs quickly. And this one is fragrance-free. I just love how it goes on. I love how it feels. Although it is rich, it's still lightweight. And I think it is a perfect layer under the body oil and i bought this because i finished my josie marin i listen the josie marin is always a great choice i got a little bit left here so i'll finish this completely so i can officially consider this an empty but i wanted this on standby so i could continue the flow of fantastic body care in addition to the copper faucet body butter i bought their chamomile and lavender body oil now i was apprehensive again because i'm sensitive to fragrance it's kind of like i love the idea of it but if it's too much, it can feel very claustrophobic on me. So it wasn't crazy about the body oil with the blue cactus body butter scent, but with this being fragrance free and just relying on the chamomile and lavender scent to give me that aroma experience, fantastic. Body oil is lightweight as well. It moves beautifully across the skin. And I like the chamomile lavender you smell the lavender, but I love the chamomile too because it makes it a little more flowery without it being like, get me out of here. And I love it after a shower. It's just, it smells lovely because I don't wear perfume. I, I can't do it. I, I've tried it, you know, I don't like that smell on me like all night going to bed, but this I can deal with. It, it gives me a little bit of that ritualistic experience that people like with fragranced skincare and body care, but it doesn't overwhelm my senses. I feel comfortable, but, and again, chamomile and lavender before bed, I think has a more, a calming effect on the olfactory senses or whatever. So it's like my little bedtime ritual and having the scent again at night just wraps it all together i look forward to showering and putting all this stuff on and love that i'm supporting a local business so i will continue to purchase these items yeah so i got a long way to go with the body oil yeah i've already used this much we got a lot more to use but i use around five to six pumps per per application and I had to share because I think now they've updated their website so if you are in Westchester you could check out their Instagram page where they announce where they'll be at whatever next coming upcoming farmers market or you can order it from their website if you are not local so had to share thanks copper faucet going into some nail polish listen I 
I'm laughing on myself because I'm I'm speaking with a friend and she's like, how come you haven't bought this collection yet? It's the ILNP Arcade Collection with their new cream formula, I think, if I'm not mistaken, has the ultra rad neon colors. I haven't bitten the bullet yet because I'm trying to be good, but that red coral shade and the turquoise and like that, it's like a lavender blue. Oh my gosh, I'm just, is on my radar. I decided though to go back into my ILNP collection and remember how beautiful Cloud 9 was. I have Cloud 9 now on my nails, but I also took some footage here under the sun because what I love about this collection is the soft pastel base with the iridescent shimmer going through. So some have like that coral shimmer, others have more like a turquoise shimmer. My one critique is that I wish they could have replaced one of the pinks or lavenders with like a mint. Oh, I think that would have been outstanding. Or, or keep the mint, replace either again the lavender or the pink and put in like a gray. Oh, but I get that the blue kind of looks gray because it's so soft and pastel-y, it could pass for gray. I've been wearing these nonstop. I don't know if it's because I just, I can't get the words out. The soft nature of the polish, but you have the shimmer there. So it adds a little bit of pizzazz without it being like super ultra multi-chrome because I love those moments also, right? I think they have a place, but I've just been gravitating towards these shades because like how my, the length of my nails and the fact that it kind of looks pastel, but it has that iridescent finish to the look has just been perfect for me. So I've been wearing these suckers nonstop and I owe myself another manicure because this is starting to chip and I'm, I'm gonna do cloud nine again. I am maybe with the more opalescent base. There's one with like a white milky base with the pink shimmer going through. I might go back in with either another pink shade. So I've been having a great time. So instead of buying the new arcade collection, which I might eventually still, because I'm just a sucker for nail polish, I decided to go back to what I already have and embrace the love that when I, listen, when I first applied Cloud9, I was like, wow, this collection is stunning. There are a couple of others that I had my eye on. I think they released like a fairy collection. Oh, that was beautiful as well. I didn't bite the bullet on that one either, but Cloud9 is where it's at, at least for half of July. Brushes. You know there's only one that I wanna share in this video. And although it came at the end of June, I've been using the heck out of it. The Sonya G Fusion Sheer buffer brush. Some of you have said that you bought two. I am not far behind. I think I'm gonna buy another one. This is a spectacular brush. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I have a video dedicated to using the Fusion Sheer Buffer and I actually have some B-roll to share because many of you had asked about different products that I didn't share in the previous video. So today I went in with the KBD Good Apple Apple Bomb Something Something Foundation and also the RCMA because one of you had asked about the RCMA, but the Fusion Sheer Buffer with the KBD Foundation is perfection because this could be a little balmy, but the construction of the brush where the, the top layer of bristles are synthetic, but they're thin, so they won't pick up as much product. And whatever product they do pick up, that second layer of goat and synthetic bristles buffs it beautifully into the skin. And especially with something of this, this texture and formula, my goodness, the way the Future Buffer made this look on my face. Are you kidding me? And on the other side, I applied RCMA. Now, just from a design standpoint and how the RCMA palette is constructed, maybe not as harmonious as you see like in the KVD or even the Patrick Ta from my original Fusion Sheer Buffer video, but I just pinched the brush to pick up a little more product from the pans and it buffed it well into the skin. So if you're wondering about those products, a Fusion Sheer Buffer got you. Then I had to go in with this old as Chanel, Soleil, Deltan, whatever this is called. Listen, 
this is an old product, but I am so stubborn because I'm like, listen, I got a lot of product in this stupid tub and this is the original formula without the coconut oil. I know there was some dialogue about, you know, not people liking it anymore because it's reformulated, but my goodness, this Soleil de Tan is a lot tighter than let's say the Say or even the NARS. I did try this with the NARS in Laguna three because this is a drier consistency but the fusion sheer buffer picks up the right amount where it doesn't look heavy on the skin i have a lot of lotion on but i applied this yesterday and look at that it just shears it out like the brush is designed to do it's in the name so today i apply the chanel and my gosh you could swirl in that sucker and not be afraid of what will happen. It just beautifully diffuses into your skin. And then I followed with the Westman Atelier, the, the Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in Doo Doo. I applied it on my cheeks first. Fusion Sheer, effortless. And some of you are wondering about powder application. Now, I went in with Pat McGrath's Divine Bronzer in Bronze Nirvana. I think... It depends on the powder and Bronze Nirvana is, I think, a, a perfect matchup with the Fusion Sheer Buffer because it's very light, the powder itself, and the top layer of synthetic bristles picks up the right amount. And then I went in with the Gucci. Now the Gucci is a softer powder and you can see here, I think the top layer bristles are a little too, too much for this type of formula. So I gently patted into soft red and then whipped it onto my skin. But you could use the Fusion Sheer Buffer with powder. I just wanted to show you the demos because if you're wondering about that application, it's an expensive brush, you want it to be as versatile as possible, I get it. Yeah, the versatility is there, 100%. And you can see more demos again in my original video. All the timestamps are down in the description box if you wanted to skip over to a specific one. This is a, a phenomenal, I had, listen, my gosh, I can't get the words out. This is one of Sonia G's best, period. And there are a lot of outstanding designs in her collection. I, top five Sonia G brush video, coming at you soon. This though, this right here, can't, I can't. And I want to now, I wanna just see something. Yes, also great with the house labs. Why not just put it on there? Just get it on there. Lavender blonde, by the way. Gorgeous color. It's purple, but it works, right? It's a little cooler. And although I do love soft red, I don't know if you haven't uh, figured this out, but the Gucci soft red is a favorite in this video, by the way. I want to get into more detail in a minute. Combining the different shades of mauve and coral, peach and berry, they all match. Yeah, I adore my cheek products. Excuse me. I love how they look. And I love how the Fusion Sheer Buffer just does its thing. What can I say? Now allow me to go deeper into Gucci's Soft Red. This color is perhaps one of the most beautifully formulated. Well, let me do that on this side because the lotion is giving a lot of uh, saturation. This color when I applied this for the first time, I was just blown away by the application, but the shade itself. And I had tried the Dior Blush Glow, whatever it's called, in Cherry. Cherry is a beautiful shade. I prefer Soft Red because I think it's more nuanced. I also prefer the formula. The, it's a little softer. The Gucci's a little softer and I feel has more of a silky application on the skin. And the Coral Red Hue you can't go wrong. I think that is just summer all the way, that burnt look, and you can be more liberal with this application as I like to do, not only apply it on the apples, but closer towards the center of my face. I'll whip this blush across the nose, okay? I'll go there and it looks gorgeous. And of course, Lavender Blonde from House Labs. I couldn't stay away from this color. Look at it, my gosh, you just, and of course, Pat McGrath's Glow Color Bomb. I'm not sure what the general consensus is with this bomb, okay? I love it. And let me put all the disclaimers out. I was invited to the event. I'm a Pat McGrath fan. I got Pat McGrath hugs. I still love this product because of its uniqueness. 
in just filling in that blush stick role in your makeup collection that might not have been filled yet to have, yes, a more glassy skin effect on your cheeks, not so robust in color, but just enough color. And I understand it can look greasy, 100%. If you feel like you're oily, if your oily complexion will just look like a huge grease ball with this color bomb sticks, I totally get it. I think you can mitigate that finish if perhaps you apply this on top of a more matte foundation or you apply your powder blush first and then tap on the color bomb afterwards. I think that is a great way for not only color reinforcement, but for some more longevity and to lessen the glass skin look, to lessen that dewy finish from the blush stick. So just some considerations. And listen, I bought Peach Lotus and the Duo Stick. Okay, another favorite in Cyber Lotus that I applied here on the higher cheekbone area. And this is a little more uh, glittery, from, from lack of a better word, than the original blush stick, or excuse me, highlighter stick duos, because this is like their actual, the brand's actual formula for the highlighter duo. But I love the blue shimmer in there. I just think it adds lovely sparkle to the cheekbones. And advantageous, in my opinion, to go in with the Invisible Balm first. So you have a little bit of zhuzh on the cheekbones where when you apply the the sparkly side of the stick, those particles will melt better into the skin and won't look as dried and also will have better distribution there. So that's just my my tip. If you are having trouble with that, the Cyber Lotus stick, go in with the bomb side first and the cyber whatever moment on the other, it'd be fine. Just look at these cheekbones, oh my gosh. I have a lot of makeup on. I just want you to know I got a lot of makeup on and my skin, the skin is looking fresh. I don't feel like I appear overly made up. You could tell me though, for sure, because I think it's all due to this brush, right? It's not gonna pick up as much product and it's just gonna buff, it's gonna, it's in the name, it's gonna buff the sheerness for you, all right? So there are a lot of makeup products that I haven't used in a very long time now that I have this tool and with all the blush, with all the blush products that I have purchased over the course of June, my goodness, it's been it's been a godsend. I, I adore using these products and applying them in the gradient fashions that I have, experimenting with how I layer them, how I combine the colors. It's been a fun time. And I would love to know down below, fam, what your experiences have been, what your favorite cocktails are, your favorite, even if it's not the Fusion Sheer Buffer, what favorite brushes you love to use. Uh, if you have the Globe color sticks, what your combinations are. If you put the powder on first or the powder on, whatever it is, I would love to know. I apologize for the light change. I had to run out and catch my laser hair removal appointment. So we're back. Let's conclude this month's list with no other than what I think you know I'm about to show. Natasha Denona's Yucca Palette. Let me first start by saying that I bought this myself. I am on Natasha Denona's PR list, but I did not receive this palette, but I did become an affiliate. Alicia 15 for 15% off. I apply the shadows here for the video. Why don't I bring you through a quick B-roll demo, Calathea. My gosh, this khaki olive, some, some cream to powder, just heavy on the outer lid. The texture makes it unbelievably easy to blend and it has a beautiful smoky effect, but the color richness remains. It doesn't look gray and dull on the skin. It still maintains like that, that desaturated olive color. Blended the edges with acacia, that mustard olive leaning matte. Wanted to throw in Kamu Kamu on the inner corner and had to go in with Elijah on the lid because this is the more cooler leaning out of the metallics. And one day, I applied this shade with the more warmer leaning. I think it was, let me see here, Ixia and Fushi and Valley. Oh my gosh, I the contrast was unbelievable. And I know initially people might think it will look too off, but it works. And I 
completely trust Natasha Denona's decisions when when she decides what to include in these mini palettes because she makes it where no matter the the column the row how you want to do it trio quad duo you will get a look that's beautiful and it will not let you down place a little bit of plantasia on the lower inner lash line Threw on the Kamu Kamu liner on my waterline for some vibrancy there. Listen, I've been using the Yucca palette all month. Ever since I received it in the mail, it's been nonstop because I just wanted to explore the different possibilities. How this palette works if you want a soft look, a more glam look, if you want it to combine more than one shade. And the fact that you have the turquoise or I guess teal to be more specific, the olive khaki mustard tones, they all work beautifully together. The metallics in here, my goodness, I believe it is a new formula that she first released in her Love Face palette. It's like a dual chrome sparkly sum. I, I forgot what the, the official name was. I think it exists in Elijah uh, Como Rebi. Get out of here. Makia is gorgeous as well. As this is the more olive leaning just it's like silvery but that touch of green in there is absolutely gorgeous and again everything works beautifully together i look forward to every time i hop into this palette because it's just magical it's magical this summer release was beyond my expectations one of natasha denona's best i now want to film a new top five natasha denona mini eyeshadow palette ranking because this has made it into top five it bumped one of them out <laughs> i probably know which one that is i'm not quite sure but i think i would love to film it again because this deserves to be the top five now 100 percent in terms of again the undertones, the color choices, the ratio between matte cream to powder and metallic or the duochrome sparkly arkly shade, well done. Bravo to the Yucca palette, a star product of my June favorites list and I will continue using it throughout the summer. I don't know what other eyeshadow palettes are gonna drop. As I'm filming this video, Isamaya just dropped Industrial 2.0 and I immediately thought of Cosmos and the reason why I'm leaning towards the Industrial palette is because you're like, Alicia, you said that about the accent shades in the Cosmos palette. The, the 2.0 look like a bunch of accent shades. I do believe that a lot of those shades are anchor ones that I can wear solo, kind of like what I feel in Decadence Mothership 4. Like all those shades you could wear solo, right? All over the lid. Although I did argue sometimes it can be a little overwhelming because if you combine all of them, it's like, whoa, that's a look. But you have some of those shades, but you got like the frosty iridescent moments also in 2.0. Like you could whip the mid-tone turquoise all over your lid and lower lash line and then tap on the more iridescent blue for like that highlight effect. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Let me know what you want. Let me know down below what you're leaning towards, friends. I'd be happy to buy 2.0. Listen, I have the first industrial palette. I absolutely love it. I know it wasn't a jam for many, but <laughs> I want this one now because the compact, I mean, do you see this compact? It is outrageous and I just think unique. It's what I feel about Byredo eyeshadow palettes. They don't come out with them things every whatever. So whatever Isamea brings out, I think is special. I didn't get her Wild Star collection, but this I might get. I'll keep you updated. And then my friends is it for June favors. I would love to know what favorites you have encountered for the month. I will see you down in those comments. And until then, that is... A wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. <laughs> Is a man industrial 2.0 eyeshadow palette review? Or I'll see you over on the membership channel where we have more tutorials and live videos. Take care and I will see you again soon.